Okay, so welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're taking a look at My Hero 1's Justice 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Does this one take the original game and pack in new features, gameplay, mechanics, you know, a whole lot of good stuff? Or is it simply more the same where they just like slapped the two on the end and called it a day? And really, it could have, you know, maybe just been an expansion. Well, that is what we're here to answer for you today. So with that, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we do. Leave a like on the video if we help you out today. And let me know what you thought of the original in the comments below. And if this one's tempting you to spend, you know, a little bit of money. Let's jump in. So spoiler free is my motto, so we story keeping this super quick. If you're a fan of the show, expect this one to pick up shortly after the first game, covering arcs from season four of the anime. Does it add anything new to what you know you've seen in the show? Not really, but there's a minor thing here and there. Then, if you've never seen the show before, you'll probably be completely lost. But you'll get the core idea of it all. It introduces the characters again very quickly, but the core idea is still kind of explained. You know, the world and most of the population here, they're born with superpowers, and the result of this is academies dedicated to it, basically, and then there's big-ass battles between heroes and villains. Fans of the show should be happy, and for those new, I'd be surprised if if after playing this you didn't want to jump into the show, but it also will probably spoil a ton of information for you. So if you're not caught up with Season 4's offence yet, maybe do that first. For me, I loved it, the game, I thought it did a great retelling of what I've seen before, and I strongly do urge you, if you've never watched the show before, I'd consider pretty much going on watching it nearly immediately. So first off, the big thing character roster here, it brings the first 23 fighters from the original game along for the ride while adding in an additional 17. It makes for a pretty impressive fighter count of 40. Fans of the series, basically you're going to find someone you like, that is pretty much guaranteed and there's also going to be DLC later in the year with an additional five characters. Now even I will say with the original 23 as well, we've seen developments, their fighting styles, they've changed, moves, they've been tweaked, new specials introduced. The game's adapting alongside the anime and the skills you would have no doubt seen them develop are packed in here as well. Basically if you had the first game coming here you're going to be finding differences and whole new rhythms to your, your favourite characters so you're almost going to have to to, you know relearn them it's going to feel familiar but still very very different on the note of playable characters i do want to mention if you pre-ordered you will get an additional character too no move i'm not sure personally how i feel about locking a character by basically forcing you to pre-order but yeah we'll cover that another day that's like a topic and rant all in itself that i'll save for another video so when it comes to the combat the controls how does it feel especially in comparison to that first game well, while the controls are near identical to the original, I will say it all feels a bit more refined and responsive. It's still the basic fighter we actually got first time around, and that's in no way a complaint, by the way. Because, yeah, it might lack depth, this one, but it makes up for that with just, like, over-the-top fun. Here, though, this second game, it just feels smoother. The tweaks they've made you can feel, and every punch, every combo you throw just, just looks and feels tons, tons better. For those new to the series, being a 3D arena based game, it really means there's no like true kind of like specials, no like crazy inputs you need to go through. This is what the controls basically come down to. We get a strike button which can be spammed for just like combos, like 10, 20 hits at a time, counter attacks, unguardable attacks, attacks that can break defenses, quirks which are basically superpowers that vary on the ground and in the air, sidekick attacks which is one of two support characters you get to choose from and I'll just jump in, do a few seconds of damage and then jump out, and then finally ultras which are your special moves and you get like three or four of these. Also it's worth noting you pull off the special moves and sidekicks though by filling the plus ultra bar at the top of the screen or the bar you see under the sidekicks. To do this, basically, it's it's like any fighter, kick some ass and this thing will quickly start to fill. Now I know when I'm saying it like that, it does sound like a lot to learn, I get that, and it will take some time, but there's no, like I said, convoluted inputs here. You know, the most complicated move you're gonna face is pushing the R trigger, plus X, plus A, all together at the same time. That's gonna unleash your most devastating ultra move and is by far the most challenging it gets, so you get the idea. The combat here is more about having a good guard and defense system and being able to effectively move around the arena and dodge and defend. That's what this gameplay comes down to. If you go online, 
it's not going to be like you know months and months of practice here this is more just strategy if anything now why i enjoy this one the most is it's just it's got an epic approach to everything arenas they collapse around you characters are flying around the screen punches and kicks they're not just punches and kicks this thing's like lightning bolts fire attacks explosions it truly makes you feel like a superhuman which to me is all the fun of the anime and why we watch it on that note too, the arenas themselves, they become part of the gameplay, they're almost a character in themselves. Whether it's using the environments, you know, to dodge out the way, to move, destroying it to get through to one of your enemies, walking and fighting vertically up the walls, or simply smashing through the floor, and then finding out there's actually a whole additional arena below you waiting for you just to discover it. The arenas are just a ton of fun, there's so many options here and so many little secrets that you won't really see on initially loading up the game. Here like the fighters though we're seeing them bring back the original 15 and they're adding in another 10 to make the total count 25. So complaints for the combat, the camera, when it struggles it really does struggle. Now I will say 90% of the time it's absolutely fine, you know it can give you a few weird angles but I think they really did what they could with the gameplay. But occasionally, I will say, it did get stuck in the environment, face the wrong way entirely, or just simply struggle to keep up with the action. Then I will say I'm throwing this in with gameplay too, just occasionally the frame rate would drop, where the environments, you know, they're crumbling and you're facing off with one special attack against another special attack and just everything's going crazy on the screen. Yeah, it stumbles sadly. It's not very often, but play this and you will notice that occasional moment. It was never damaging to my gameplay, my experience or anything, but it is worth knowing. Okay, so with the core combat out of the way, let's talk game modes. What do we get? Well, we see the return of story mode, mission, online play, free battle, arcade mode, and finally training mode. To break these down, story mode, it's basically one fight after another buffered with story moments, obviously. Now this isn't the typical pick a fighter, have like 10 fights and get like, you know, a very short 10 second cutscene. This, it's everything from opening tutorials through to ramping difficulty, telling the entire kind of arc of the storyline of My Hero Academia. One thing I really enjoyed about the first game was the story mode and they've delivered that here again. This is forcing you to try out all the different fighters, it's teaching you new techniques along the way, it cuts together story moments and you know just iconic fights from the anime. It's everything I want from a story mode and it will even keep you busy for like 7 hours which is definitely impressive for the genre. In story mode then we also see the return of submissions. These are optional paths or fights that you can take that will basically give you the same you know, story but from a different viewpoint. Last up for story, expect a ton of unlockables, they're rewarded based on bonus tasks, so maybe you're just pushing the story forward for some of them, or even you might have to beat a fighter in like 60 seconds, or pull off a, you know, maybe like a 10 hit combo. There's lots of little things in here to keep you coming back and repeating sections. Next up then we get arcade play, here you'll be choosing your hero or villain and battling through 6 different opponents. Here you can also choose 2 sidekicks who you're going to be using in the fight alongside you. This mode is a typical genre arcade mode, now it's a 3 round fight with the first to 2 winning, there's a ramping difficulty as you progress, and then there's some very minor dialogue interactions between fights that add nothing, honestly. What makes this interesting is though, with each character you actually get 3 separate arcade modes or 3 different skill trees to work through, A, B and Y, and you will see stars populate next to your character as you've beaten them. With 40 characters, that means there's like 120 paths to work through, each containing their own unlockables and rewards, alongside a high score system if you really want to go back for a second playthrough of any of them as well. Okay, so let's talk free battle and online play. Free battle, it's local play. Fight with friends or AI opponents and make the matches you want, you know, with like varying rules from time limit, whether you have sidekicks or not, the number of rounds, and the strength and ability of your opponent if you're going that AI route. Where this gets really interesting though is playing with friends in the new 2v2 battle mode. Four friends here can get together and battle it out. Two of you will take the two leaders of each team, will play a three and four will control the sidekicks. Once you call them into battle, all mayhem will break loose as it goes into like a 2v2 fight in these arenas and it really is awesome to see. Two things though I wish they did do here, one, 
I wish we could just do you know two players versus AI and then two I wish it was simply just two versus two in these arenas and it was more than just summoning in a co-fighter for a few seconds at a time would be your friend participating because you see once they take damage they're actually knocked out and you're going to need to rebuild up your stamina bar or whatever you want to call it and summon them in again also this mode it's not available online this is local only so it's whether you've got four controllers to hand to even to even really take this on Online play then the clues in the name, go fight online 1v1. You get the choice here of unranked and ranked. Uh, the few games I've played, they've not been bad, but with this being 3D arena combat, the tiniest bit of lag can just destroy the entire experience. For me, I'd say 50% of the games I had were fine, 50% I encountered lag. There's, there's always that challenge with this sort of fighter. Also, there was some noticeable frame rate stutters here too that played a big part in making me win or lose. When you're going 1v1, you're throwing a lot of the heavier attacks at each other. So all that visual flair, the environment exploding, I think it put a lot of pressure on the game itself. One feature of online that wasn't available at the time of this refuto, event info. These will be challenges sent out to the community for you to beat to get like exclusive unlockables. Beat them and that's your reward. Right now though, it just says coming soon, so I can't comment yet. For gameplay modes then, finally, we've got missions. These are by far the biggest departure from the first game. Pretty much everything else has remained the same. In the first though, these were basically like a few fights in a row with some specific clear conditions. Here, they've developed it into something more, which reminds me of like a first person shooter where you capture points. The idea is this, you're presented with a map with multiple directions you can go. You and your team pick your location and opponents, defeat them to take over that part of the map. Clear the map and you win. For every fight though, the percentage of that area lowers. If it hits zero, you're going to lose and it's going to be starting this all over again. Likewise, if you lose a battle, it might take 5% over every location. It's simplistic, but it's a fun like minor strategy inclusion, I've got to say. Here you're also again going to be earning rewards and kinds, and these kinds, you're going to actually be paying for new heroes, you're like recruiting them into this squad to clear out these maps. Last up, let's talk customization. As you've probably noticed, you're earning something after nearly every fight in this game, and that's either coin, customization options, or small art pieces you'll find in the gallery. The customization, I will say, I'm not going to go too deep with it, but it's amazing. I really did like it. The first one was really good. This one's even more robust, and it just gives you some really fun options and ridiculous ones to experiment with. It's not the most detailed or anything, but it's just very in keeping with the anime, and I appreciate that. So overall, My Hero 1's Justice 2 could simply be brushed off as a glorified expansion. I mean, when you look at the main menu, it's pretty much the same layout. The core gameplay modes, near identical. And when you look at the back of the box, to be honest, the only thing it tells you is it has 40 fighters. That's it. And I gotta say, that had me worried when I did go out and buy this game. Like, was that all this one's bringing to the table? Now though, having spent time with it, I can say we see a number of improvements. The new mission mode adds like considerably more depth. The story this time around, I, I will say I enjoyed it a little bit more. We get a pretty cool local 2 v 2 mode, I'm just not sure how often I'll get to use that. And then the tweaks, that's the big one to the core gameplay and that expanded character roster is seriously impressive. I think this, as sequels go for fighters, falls pretty much in line with most out there. Graphically speaking, I liked the look of the first game. I didn't think it was the strongest, but this, it's made some advancements on the Switch. The combat, it doesn't look all too different, nor do the characters, but I think the biggest difference is the attacks, the flashes that come up on screen. Everything just feels bigger, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Like the first game, though, character models, they've now changed as well to look more in keeping with Season 4 and how these characters have progressed. And they've done a fantastic job of just embodying the spirit of the anime. I also will say I really liked all the new animations. They take these epic attacks to new levels, but with the new smoothness and this new ability to really take these combos to another level, they just flow one into each other and it, it looks really great. Also on a side note, character story mode, the introduction to the game, it's presented in like either a 2D comic style, style or 3D. Both look amazing. I loved the visual take of the story mode and I always looked forward to that occasional 3D cutscene as well. I, I don't think they disappointed on either front. 
Now, unfortunately, with all that positivity out of the way, the same can't be said of the arenas. Yes, the destruction, it's cool and everything, I, I don't disagree, but the worlds we inhabit here are just kind of bland. Low texture, low detail shells of what they are trying to be. The classroom, plain walls, the city with like zero life. Plus they're identical to the first game, there's not a single thing that's been changed. You know, the stores which you smash into on some of the street levels, you go inside and there's nothing in them or there's just like maybe the same blurry texture repeated over and over. There's so much opportunity missed and instead of updating these ones from the first game, they just carried them across in their identical form and then added another 10 kind of boring locations too. That's a shame and the visuals to me are what largely have people asking is this simply an expansion because there is a lot of repetition in these locations. I gotta say adding 10 to 15, it's not even double at this point and you're asking for an extra like 60 bucks at this point. Outside of this thing, graphically speaking, with the user interface, the health bar, the power meters, all of that, 10 times better than the original. It's easy to understand now. Each has a purpose, and they've just become part of this world. They look like you could put them directly into the show, and you wouldn't question it, unlike the first game, which was pretty bland looking. I especially, in this one, love the plus ultra meter. This, to me, this is how you handle an interface system and capture the spirit of the fighter itself at the same time. Then the main menus, the first game, again, kind of weak, honestly, suffering from just like low detail, kind of blurry. Here, they finally match the full retail price they're asking for when you boot this one up. Yeah, the layout's largely the same, but the animations as you access each mode are really nice. The design of things like mission mode, there's just a whole lot more care in this one. It looks like they've invested a lot more money to bring everything up to scratch. I think the first game was kind of like build the fighter, then build everything else kind of slowly after. Here, I think they've had time to focus on some of these smaller but in still important areas. So last up, two quick ones. Playing this one, both docked and undocked, it feels just slightly sharper and less pixelated when it comes to the menus and the gameplay compared to the first game. And then load times. The original was pretty rough, I've got to say, when it came to loading times, and I'm happy to say with this one, we've seen a decent improvement. It's still not the quickest, but it is, yeah, a big advancement, probably half the time the original one takes. Long waits are now, for the most part, though, not noticeable. Okay, so overall, while the arenas, they still disappoint, and characters and animations, I gotta say, they're largely the same. Where we see the advancements really do make a difference, you know, from the menus adding that well factor to health meters and specials that are easier to understand. Yeah, I will say it's not huge leaps forward or anything, but areas I did question when I played the first game, it's almost like they've been answered in this one. I would have liked to have seen a lot more still, but what we get is definitely still, you know, useful. So audio and keeping this quick, music is a My Hero Academia soundtrack. Like the show, you'll like this. Dialogue is all, you know, recorded, but just know there's no dub soundtrack sadly here. This is Japanese with subtitles only. Not a problem for me personally, but I know it will upset some people out there. And then sound effects, for the most part, they're solid. Each character has like attached grunts, which are in keeping with the characters. Attacks sound powerful and huge, which is exactly what we want. And yeah, it just kind of sounds like I would expect it to. If I had a complaint, a few more environmental sounds would have been good. Make me feel like I'm in the city or the academy. And then the destruction sounds, you know, as structures crumble, walls explode. It's kind of missing a lot of the power you would expect to see alongside that. And I would have loved to have heard it personally. I will say though, if you like how My Hero Academia sounds and don't mind that missing English dub, you should be absolutely fine here. Overall, on first look, it's easy to mistake My Hero 1's Justice 2 for simply an expansion. To be honest, I kind of made that prejudgment going into this one, you know, just an increased character count, a few new arenas and largely the same gameplay modes. Even the graphics, as I said, they remain largely unchanged. But if you do dive in a little deeper, you'll find a totally new story mode, an improved mission mode that includes some strategy, which is a nice touch, a more in-depth customization, and then most importantly, a fine-tuned battle system that makes the first game just feel almost like clunky and dated when you return to it. Also that user interface, gotta say, it brings everything together. This, it's actually a huge difference. The gameplay here for me is just a huge step up. This is how I always wanted the original to feel. 
That being said, though, there is obviously issues, as we've discussed, the arenas, they're bland. The combat system, I'd love to see kind of more in-depth options here. And also then, as problems go, we get a few frame rate drops here and there. It didn't really ruin the experience for me or make too much of an impact, but I know it's definitely a big deal when it comes to a fighter. Even then, though, I've got to say, I still had a great time with this one and I would actually put it considerably higher above the original. Today I'm giving My Hero One's Justice 2 a good 7 out of 10. If you love the original and you're considering this one, I would say go for it. Likewise, if you're new to this series and you're trying to decide should you pick up the first one for cheap or go you know, full force with this full retail one, I'd say go for this one. It's the far superior package. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we do. Leave this video a like if it helped you out. And let me know in the comments below what would you like to see next for this series. For me, I want a 2D fighter like Dragon Ball Fighters with some serious depth where I can pull out the arcade stick and go a little bit crazy. With that, I'll see you all on the next video.